Hello everyone and let's do a book review for House Rules by Jodi Picoult. Um, I ended up giving this one three stars, so there's a couple of issues I had. So let's go ahead and tell you what this is about. This is told in five POVs that alternates between Emma, who is the mother, Theo, who is the little brother of Jacob, who is the autistic person where that the emphasis and the story revolves around Jacob. You have Rich, who is a detective that pops up, and Oliver, who is a lawyer and is Jacob's lawyer. So Jacob is autistic. It does throw around the term Asperger's quite a bit. And this was published in 2010, so please be aware of that. And this is a standalone. This has on Scribd, it is 19 hours and 55 minutes at one time speed, and the following are the narrators. You have Mark Turetsky, Rich Orlo, Nicole Poole, Christopher Evan Welch, and Andy Paris. So you, also, you have a narrator per character. So what Jacob's special interest used to be dinosaurs when he was younger. Now that he is older, he is like 17 or 18. I think he's 18. He is 18 in this book. And his special interest is forensic science. There is this show that he likes to watch. When some of the shows were described, he actually takes notes on the shows. When the shows were talked about, a lot of them reminded me of episodes that I have seen of the original CSI show. So that was interesting. <laughs> um, I think the show is called Crime Busters in here, but it reminded me a lot of this show CSI. J uh, Jacob <clears throat> has a police scanner in his room, and he will go to crime scenes and give advice to the detectives or forensic scientists that are there of how to do their job. Uh, sometimes, a lot of the times, he is right because he this is a special interest, so he is very knowledgeable in this. Um, but it can get annoying with people that are just trying to do their job. Very understandable. Um, <clears throat> at one point, someone that Jacob knows ends up dead, and Jacob ends up in the center of the investigation and people think that he murdered this person and so that's how everything kind of hit the fan. So that's pretty much what it's about. You're following as they... You're not seeing a lot of investigation. I mean, you see a little bit until they realize that Jacob... They think that Jacob is a murderer, the detectives and the law enforcement. And of course, his family is like, no, he's not. You're thinking he's guilty when he really just has Asperger's. But there are signs that point to Jacob having been involved in things. Now, once it starts to get to where he is at the center of this investigation, you're not seeing a lot in the investigation. You're seeing a lot of the trial of him in... Uh, certain situations where he is overstimulated and uh, things like that. So, I mean, you're watching where he is in court, where he is in jail, um, where he is just dealing with all of this. Um, a lot, I did find that how a lot of the traits that Jacob had with having Asperger's or being on the aut autism spectrum are things that you would expect to see, which is your very stereotypical descriptions that you see in other books and that you would see in movies from Hollywood. So not surprising as far as how things were described and how Jacob and his traits and interests and his actions were described. It was not surprising. I felt like it was definitely not unique. It was very kind of a almost cookie cutter esque. I've, it's like I've seen all of this a lot now. Granted, like the special interests were different, and certain things might have been different, but it was very much the same thing that you'll have read from other books. So that's pretty much all I can can say. Um, you know, like I said, you've got his mother, and she she talks about what it was like to realize that her child is autistic. 
and having to try and advocate for him in school and other situations and things like that. So that's, this is a thicker book. I gave it three stars. I did have a good time reading it. I was intrigued to enough to continue on and wanted to know how it was going to resolve. I will say I am disappointed with how it ended. I thought that there could have been more explanation, especially where this is a standalone. I think enough, I think more should have been told, if that makes sense. I just felt like there was a lot of information lacking in the ending for wrapping it up. So a couple things you need to be aware of with going into this. You have family abandonment. So you do have someone that abandons their family. And with Jacob being on the autism spectrum, he has meltdowns. And you have his mother physically restraining him, like pinning him down to the ground. That was uncomfortable to read. So you have him having a meltdown and he is pinned to the ground. They, she talks about how it is comforting to him because it's like this extra weight on him. Like a lot of people like a weighted blanket. It's compared to that, but it is still restraining him so that he doesn't hurt someone or hurt someone else. You have theft. You have breaking and entering. You have um, kind of like a peeping Tom type situation. You have a lot of talk, and this was really kind of uncomfortable to read. You have a lot of talk about the debate of how vaccines cause autism that there are people that don't believe that, that people in the medical field have studied and have come up that it's that actually is not the case. But in this case, the mother is definitely a firm believer that the vac vaccinations that Jacob had caused his autism, and that is brought up a lot. So do be aware of that. Another thing is you do, you do have physical abuse at some points, and you have bullying. So, yeah, so voyeurism, uh, self-harm and molestation. And you do have someone that is talked about that does have Down syndrome, but that is like maybe half a page's worth, if that. So uh, those are some things to definitely be aware of. It was a little bit difficult to read. There are some things in here that I did like. I do have tabbed. We will get to that in a minute. Um, I'm going to go through the words that do pop up that could be very bothersome to some readers. But I I think I've decided I am going to unhaul this. I do think the writing was fine. It was good. I am, am definitely intrigued. I enjoyed the writing enough that I will pick up more of this author's work. But this particular story, I think with me being autistic and some of the stuff and how some of the stuff was written, it bothered me enough and bugged me that I am going to unhaul this book. So now, oh, and all of the perspectives are told in first person. Okay, so let's talk about um, some of the other things that you need to be aware of. Oh, another trigger warning is you do have death of a child. There are some true crime cases that are talked about in this, like legitimately true crime, and there are seven of them, so it does get kind of graphic at times. And you do have a sex scene in this, and it is closed doors, so do be aware of that. Okay, now let's talk about the words that could be bothersome to some people. You have the term nutcase comes up one time, as well as bastard, sodomize, the phrase gaydar comes up one time and it's kind of done in a, it is done in my opinion in a rather derogatory way, especially with, with what it's compared to. So yeah, definitely be aware of that. You have the word dick, tits, and foreplay and slut. Also, I'll, I'll come up one time. Oh, two other things that I have now notice on my paper. You also have kind of like a body dis top talk of body dysmorphia as well as suicide. So those are your other trigger warnings. You have the term prick coming up three times and then as far as female anatomy you either have breasts or boob come up three times. So it's one came up twice and another one once type of a situation. So 
but since it's the same body part, it came up three times. You have the word bitch that comes up four times. And then you have the word rape coming up five times. Now when it comes to the word rape, it is just mentioned. It does not get explicit or descriptive. So um, that's a positive that it doesn't delve into that. It's just kind of mentioned that so-and-so could have been raped uh, or a rape did happen, things like that. But you're not getting a description. You have the term sexual assault coming up six times. Same situation. It does not get uh, into a lot of detail. You have the word freak coming up eight times. And with the word freak, it is referred to Jacob and his autism. So that's where a lot of the bullying does come in. The other word that comes up eight times is the name Christ. So definitely be aware of that. Now we are going to enter into double digits. You have the name Jesus coming up 18 times. And then this word made it very uncomfortable. I hate this word, but it comes up also 18 times and it is in reference to Jacob and his autism. And that is the word retard. He has called that multiple times. That is from the form of the bullying. Again, please be Remember, this was published in 2010. I think if this was written today, I would hope that word is not in here if it was rewritten or written today. But, I mean, that's 13 years ago that this was published. So, who knows? But that word does pop up 18 times. So, it was uncomfortable to read. You do see a lot of the animosity and disgust uh, that people have towards Jake because they don't, Jacob, because they don't understand him um, and think he's weird and all of that, um, which is very unfortunate, but that's, that's how it was written. All right, moving on, you have the word shit coming up 22 times. And then we have ass that comes up 24 times. Damn comes up 28, and please be aware now, I, I did not separate these, so damn could have been damned, um, damnation, damnable, things like that. So it could be some slight variations, but the root word is damn. Uh, and then we have the word fuck coming up 33 times. There were times that it's I was like, eh, does it really need to be in there? Some of the word usage, a lot of the word usage, just I feel like was unnecessary to the point that it was definitely uncomfortable. The last two words I have to tell you about, the name God comes up 52 times, and then hell comes up 54. So something to be aware of that. Uh, one thing you do learn is that as you learn more about Jacob's biological father, you see that his dad might actually be on the autism spectrum, but just not be diagnosed. So I feel like Jacob's dad is autistic and the psychologist that diagnosed me as autistic did say that there is always a higher chance of if you're autistic someone in the family could be autistic and it's definitely um, from the father type of a situation in cases like that. It's more likely to come from the dad than the mother. So I think I will unhaul this. It I was the writing was well done to the point that it kept me intrigued to want intrigued to want to keep reading to want to know what's going to happen next. I love forensic science, so that that is also one of my special interests. So this book was right up my alley as far as them there being autism rep and a special interest being forensic science. I loved that, but it fell short as to me as far as how uncomfortable of a read it was with how very stereotypical it was with the description of the autism and the traits um, and how much of the verbal bullying there was, especially with using the R slur and things like that and calling Jacob a freak and the restraining and things like that. It was very uncomfortable. So I am going to unhaul this. I will not, I'm not going to say I would never reread it. I think if I was part of a book club and they wanted to read it, I would reread it. Uh, to kind of refresh and have things at the front of my mind. 
but I just was uncomfortable enough to the point that I do not want my own copy. Now there are a couple of things that I did underline, so let me go ahead and tell you some of these things that I felt were very good. Um, some of these phrasings. You have, a sky with clouds is much more interesting than one that doesn't have any. And that was in reference to how someone who has kind of like struggles in their life can be more interesting than someone that does not have struggles, where everything comes easy to them in life. Sometimes you need someone else to help you take the first step. A lot of the times that's the case with someone that has an addiction or something like that. Someone kind of helps them see what's going on and helps them make that first step to asking for help. All right, this next thing I have is numbers make sense. You cannot say the same about people. That's one of the reasons why I liked math in school. I did enjoy math in school. It was not my favorite subject by any means, and I wasn't all that great at it at times, but because it was a lot of memorization and I did struggle with that. But that's one thing that I liked and I recognized at a younger age is that math can make sense and it is what it is. Two plus two equals four. You know, two times one is two. two anything times zero is zero. You know, things like that, that there is no deviation. It is black and white. That is the answer. Not with pretty much anything else. So I understood that, and that's the one thing I do like about math. Okay, uh, I have the phrase, it's never the differences between people that surprise us. It's the things that, against all odds, we have in common. You always know people are different from you. People have different opinions and stuff, but you do become more surprised when you learn something that it's like, oh, hey, we have that in common. Anyway, although the differences can surprise us at sometimes too, because we just make assumptions about everyone. Different isn't synonymous with bad. Ain't that the truth? And I think we all need to remember that. And then the last thing I have underlined is sometimes the hardest thing to hear is the truth. So, yeah, there are some good things about this, but it just made me uncomfortable. So I... I mean, I'm not opposed to rereading it for like a book club or a buddy read in the future, but I was uncomfortable enough that I just don't want my own copy. So I am going to go ahead and unhaul this. Let me know, have you read House Rules by Jodi Picoult? Have you read anything else? Uh, I am definitely interested in checking out more of the author's work, but I'm not sure what book, because I know she has a lot of books out, so yeah. Let me know what are your thoughts on this. Um, are you swayed to pick it up or to avoid it? <laughs> Let me know. Uh, talk to me in the comments section below. And until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I'll talk to you later.